a gift from Vince the Crucci for our exploration. This is an illuminated audience wristband. And you'll see these appearing a lot at more concerts these days. They, they have been around for a while. They appeared in 2012 when Xyloband first introduced a product like this on the Coldplay concert. I think it was the Milo Xyloto concert. And uh, it's basically got a band that goes around your wrist and this has got that silicone, well, spring load. It's got a spring as well, but it's got a little catch here. But actually, that's hard plastic. Uh, but it is used to actually grip the wristband. Inside the unit itself is a set of AAA cells. I wish I had some AAA cells here to actually put in this. The ones that were in it, well, the ones that were in all the units he gave me had all leaked because of uh, long-term storage. But it's nice that it uses a standard cell. It's always got a little gap here that you can pull a tab out to actually activate these so they can preload the batteries in advance. They make a thing, this particular company, PixMob, of uh, saying that you can change the batteries in theirs and recycle them. You can reuse them. But let's go deeper. Let's get inside. So the concept of this particular version, which is infrared controlled, is that once your audience is in, and then during the show, this is going to be loud, crunchy noises probably, you can make the audience wristbands light up in different colours at different parts of performance. And it does this. Mm, let's get down this. It does this using... Uh, these are RGB LEDs. There, that's probably a late pin microcontroller. I'm looking for a boost circuit. Or does it run directly at three volts? Uh, there's an infrared receiver in the middle. And I can see a smatter of transistors that might be being used to drive the LEDs if they're not being driven directly by the chip. This is a flexible circuit board. Oh, it is. Uh, and it's just going on to the battery contacts here. Right, tell you what. I'll do the usual. I'll... Take the circuit board out, I'll take a picture, reverse engineer and then we can explore the circuitry and see what's in it. One moment please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. So what do we have here? We've got a flexible circuit board material. Let me zoom down this so we can see this closer. We've got a flexible circuit board material, which is quite nice, because I could take a picture of the tracks at the back, which did help a lot with reverse engineering, particularly with relation to these tiny components here, the tiny little resistors, because they're uh, so small they don't print a value on them. Um, and it's just quite good to actually get a placement um, and be able to trace the tracks through for such small items. Um, we have three transistors, and they are driving the LEDs. One of them is a PNP transistor, and the other two are MOSFETs. There is a reason for this. I think they'd probably prefer to use the PNP transistors for cost reasons, but they've had to use MOSFETs because this thing does operate at 3 volts, and that gives them very little uh, voltage overhead above the LEDs, particularly as the batteries start going down. The batteries that were in it, well, the cells that were in it, were zinc chloride-type cells, um, and uh, that will mean that the upper voltage uh, from new is about 3 volts, and that is very close to the LEDs, but there, there's no boost. Uh, things that took me by surprise. Well, let me show you a bigger version of this, and I'll talk you through the circuit. This is me zoomed up into the middle. So, we have an 8-pin microcontroller, as is so commonly used. Unexpectedly, there is this AKIC uh, chip here, which I think is a memory chip, and that's used to store a very rough address for these so that you can have banks of them in the audience and each one will react differently to the uh, control signals. There's the two MOSFETs. The A1SHB uh, is a P-channel MOSFET and it's controlling the blue and green channels. And the uh, 2TY is a PNP and it's controlling the red channel. Uh, standard infrared receiver... Um, only other oddities here are this little uh, diode here for sort of decoupling from the uh, process supply rail, which works at slightly below 3 volts. It's unusual. Let's go straight to the schematic and explore this. I'll just leave the little circuit board there. It seems appropriate to do so. So here are the two AAA cells giving us a 3 volt rail. And there is an element of decoupling for the power supply for both the microcontroller and the memory chip via this Schottky diode 
at feeding this uh, capacitor and there's a, there is a decoupling capacitor next to the microcontroller and one next to the memory chip lot that's a well designed circuit the infrared receiver has its own isolated supply via the value that I measured in circuit of the resistor 660 ohm and a little capacitor that just provides a decoupled smooth supply because these are uh, very sensitive the infrared receiver here does contain uh, not just the actual device that receives the infrared light, but it also um, takes in, it decodes it, it demodulates it. Uh, so it has to have a very high sensitivity amplifier, and that's why they give them extra filtering. That data from the infrared goes to the microcontroller, which then controls the LEDs, and it does so via the two types of transistors. For the LEDs that are very close to supply voltage, it uses a res uh, transistor with a uh, very low drop. In this case, an A1SHB. It's a P-channel MOSFET. It's the partner to the A2SHB, which is one of my favourite uh, MOSFETs. Um, this, there, therefore, is my favourite P-channel MOSFET, I guess. The, for the red LED, they've got a much higher margin um, of voltage because the LED voltage is about 1.7 to 2 volts. And they just use a, a PNP transistor for that, a T2Y. And in the case of the MOSFETs, they've got a really high value, 82K I measured in circuit, pull-up resistor to keep them turned off, and then they're driven directly by the microcontroller. But for this transistor, the standard bipolar type transistors, they don't need so much effort to keep them off. It takes more, quite an effort to turn them on. In this case, it's this 660 ohm resistor, um, or nearest value to that, probably 680, but that's what I measured in circuit. And uh, that uh, limits the current from the microcontroller into the base um, to turn that transistor on. And then, oddly, there's just one 5.6 ohm resistor for the blues, one 8.2 ohm resistor for all the greens, and there's, uh, there's four of those LEDs. One, two, three, four. Um, but in the case of the red, for some odd reason, they've got a 51 ohm resistor per LED, and I think they're effectively using them as links as well as because uh, it, it's not going to exceed the power dissipation. It also might be that maybe they found that the red LEDs just were better. They, they operate differently. It's an older technology, so they're better. The current will be shared more evenly if you just have a resistor per LED as opposed to the blue and green, which, if they're matched, will tend to balance off quite well with the current. Um, so how are these actually controlled in the audience? Well, apparently, Vince was saying that they used what looked like... Oh, I'll zoom in a bit more on that. Uh, Vince said they used what looked like... Um, LED power cans had been hacked, modified with uh, infrared LEDs, and uh, that way, when they wanted to control particular uh, bands, they'd send out the infrared codes to them. And I'm guessing that you may be able to program each individual band with infrared, maybe give it a code for its memory chip um, to allow different sections of the audience to light up in different colours at different times. There is a more complex system that uses... Um, infrared projectors and it can actually make the whole audience behave like a video wall but they're quite complex and expensive this one sounds a lot simpler it's just washing the whole audience in a bath of the low level like like massive infrared remote controls and uh, in doing so uh, they, they just selectively switch colours in the audience um, other things worth mentioning, he said that they had to give it its own DMX stream because I don't know if it was using a generic DMX can, but it had to have a, a lower uh, output rate. It couldn't handle the full refresh of uh, DMX. But there we have it. Uh, the PixMob infrared controlled audience wristband. It, it's actually quite neat inside. It's quite interesting. And I like the fact that it does take standard uh, replaceable batteries. Quite a neat device.